laid off and then I was scheduled to close on this property in a week. So I still closed on it. Um, I still got that house today. So, um, yeah, man, it started with that. Then I moved to Houston. Um, okay. So it wasn't Jared, that friend, that happy friend. No, nah. no, <laughs> <laughs> no, man. So I, I moved to Houston and, um, I worked a little, you know, some few odd jobs. Um, I did, um, collections, worked in car sales, stuff like that, just to try to get by. Um, and I ended up starting a trucking company with a good friend of mine. So I did that for a little while and ended up hating it, man. It, it, it I felt like I was back in the oil field, you know? Um, and then Hurricane Harvey came around in Houston. So that hurricane did a lot of damage in Houston. And um, I was like, well, you know, I knew knew about this wholesaling thing, you know, just from reading. I, you know, once I find a subject that I really mm -hmm. like, I, I like dive into it, you know? And um, I was like, maybe this is my chance to start wholesaling. So um, after Harvey passed, it took me about like a month. I, um, I bought a bunch of bandit signs, you know, we buy houses. Yeah. And dude, at, at like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, I was going out there just putting them out, you know, just seeing what I got. So it took about like two to three months for me to get my first deal. And then after that, man, it's just all uphill after that first check. When did you start putting out that bandit size? Was it 2017 then? It was a uh, 2017. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So you heard about the wholesaling thing. Yeah. You were aware of it. Right. But you did not pursue it. Right. Because I didn't know. I, I was like, oh, I'm gonna tie up this property, you know, put it under contract. What if I can't close on it? Yeah. Right. So I, I didn't know anybody else that was doing it. Mm -hmm. so, so it was the fear. Yeah, it was a fear. Got it. Yeah. And then you got in and then you start, started putting out bandit signs. You had success right away or is it just like? No, it took about two to three months. Got it. Two to three months before I got my first one. Got it. Yeah. All right. How about you, Jared? Man, so I'm similar story to Cody, right? So I uh, st was in oil and gas, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> 15 years oil and gas, started pipelining uh, here in North America, you know, family thing. My brother-in-law got me in the business and um, eventually that kind of moved into deep water oil and gas. So, you know, it's pipeline is like a real rough thing, right? You know, you're roughnecking. What we were doing is, you know, laying the pipe, hydro testing it. You know, we were uh, cleaning, drying it, pigging it for all the pipeliners out there. We were pigging the pigging the pipelines. What is pigging? <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 construction pipelines do is they lay them right, and uh -huh. then they weld them, uh -huh. and then what you fill them with water, hydro test them to make sure there's no leaks, mm -hmm. and then we shoot them with air, I and mean, it's an object called a pig, what we call a pig, and then we shoot it out, and it dewaters the pipeline. Got it. Um, so, you know, basically like testing the pipeline to make sure its integrity is good. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, we were doing city to city, state to state, you know, I would be home for a week gone for, you know, 90 days, you know, we're going to the mountains, we're going to New York, we're going to Florida, we're just going everywhere. Right. And it was very sporadic and there was no schedule. So, you know, I'm the, you know, father of three kids, you know, and I was married at the time and, uh, it was very sporadic for me. So I, uh, similar to Cody, you know, I would try to get out of it a little bit and try to do this, try to do that. I was trying to do some ironwork stuff. Couldn't really find my way outside of the oil and gas. So I found myself back in oil and gas on a rotation on the rigs, you know, here in the Gulf of Mexico, down, you know, in, in Texas and Louisiana coast. So Louisiana kind of became my home away from home. And, um, you know, eventually I had to take custody of my kids and I became the primary parent and I got a desk job and I was so I was kind of I don't know so to say forced into it kind of because when I got confined to four walls I was the you know the vessel superintendent dude the project manager you know you know you know getting a project off off the ground loading it you know mobbing it up on a boat welding it getting it off going to operations finishing the complete project right and that was me and you know I had the camaraderie with the guys out there in the field and then when I got confined to four walls, you know, I did well there, but <clears throat> what did you do in the, with the four I was walls? a project, I was a project manager. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So they, uh, and I basically told them, right. I was like, Hey, you know, I've got to have a desk job or I got to go, I got to go mm -hmm. find somewhere else. So, you know, my company gave me a desk job. They gave me 50% pay cut and, and I had to do what I had to do for the kids. Right. So, right. you know, it was structure for them. I was home with them. Did that for about two or three years and uh, got real bored. It wasn't challenging, you know. I, I basically did the paperwork that my project manager did when I was offshore, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, man, I want to want to go beat out <laughs> yeah. with my guys, you know. Yeah. I want to go out into the field with them, and it just came real boring. And um, 
you know, I started looking at, you know, but my 401k started growing, right? So I wanted to start putting that money to work because I found out that you could take a loan out, right? Mm-hmm. So um, ventured off into some investments and then, I, you know, stumbled on real estate and, you know, buying a rental and uh, wasn't as glorified as what I thought it was, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Water heater went out, AC went out. I was like, man, I'm not getting any money on this. <laughs> and um, I came across Chris Rude. And, um, oh really? Yeah, yeah. And so, you were in his neck of the woods. <clears throat> that's right. Yeah. So uh, signed up with him, and uh, never looked back. When okay. I, when it, the the light bulb moment to figure out what wholesaling was was like, oh my God, man, this I cannot mm-hmm. believe this is legal. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, so I went ham on it. Right. I just listened to exactly what he said. Right. And he said, uh, if you don't have a buyer's list, you're good at sales and negotiation. Just go start, get a cold car. You know, I had money, right? It was a time mm-hmm. money thing. So, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of time, but I had a lot of money. So I went out, hired a cold caller, started filtering lead, fell in my face, didn't know how to close them. You know, did what who Ernest Buddy and all this was. Yeah. You know, I, I butchered a lot of appointments, you know, but um, I didn't have a buyer's list. And that's how, you know, me and Cody linked up. So I was cold calling. We buy ugly houses, wholesaler, mm-hmm. you know, signs, and uh, tracked him down. He and was I, a so he, you were yeah. a lead for him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. I yeah. brought him. I brought him uh, our first deal. It was a duplex. I was gonna make like a five k spread on it, and uh, you know, that was gonna that was gonna be it for me, you know. But I shot it to Cody. Finally gave me the time of the day. <laughs> I had to track this guy down, man. And uh, he's a big timer. That's right. He was. Nah. He was. Doing, he was doing deals. You know, he so, was doing deals, and this new wholesaler trying to call him. Right. So you were. This is around 2017 or 2018. This is the very end of 2018. Very end of 2018. Yes. So you guys have come a long way, really, really fast. Yeah. 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 All right. So end of 18. So then let's go back to your side. So two, three months before you got your first deal, what was your first deal like? Um. Man, it's. I, I picked it up uh, from a bandit sign. It was a flooded house, and um, I actually, you know, I didn't know what I was doing either. You know, I, I reached out to some friend that I found on Facebook that he was always putting out deals. So I was like, hey man, I got this deal in Pearland. Like, do you have a purchase contract? Like, how do I go about this? Um, so he kind of showed me the ropes a little bit, and I, I locked it up. And um, I was just, you know, every night whenever I had time, I would go on Facebook and I just. <laughs> saw people putting their emails that they they're looking for deals right Mm -hmm. so i had like a little tiny you know 20 30 you know emails of buyers and i just shot them that deal and you know i had somebody pick it up pretty quick and uh yeah man what'd you make on that first one it was about seven seven thousand yeah and the reason why i'm asking these questions is i mean you're you're kind of like going wild and do like all sorts of different things you had a coach or a mentor but you're still kind of like not quite sure what to do that's right and then you were fascinated because this other guy was posting deals right right <laughs> so it's like okay this guy is someone i can talk to about right purchase contracts so for everyone listening like you don't really need to be super smart super sharp to make this work mm-hmm. you just need to be doing stuff right and then it'll it'll work out mm-hmm. yeah that's right take action yeah. take action jump right in you know i got that from grant right right and you know that's what you know i think this is like the second time i've said it today is we're just good at finding what other people are doing good at and, and tweaking it, you yeah. know what I mean? To our own liking, to what fits our model, you mm-hmm. know? Right. So you started, again, 17, so a couple months to get your first one, sold it on a buyer's list you developed from Facebook. Right. What was your whole 17 like as far as like your first year? Uh, so, man, that's actually a good point. Um, it was stupid. You know, I was still putting out signs. It's not stupid, you got deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah but so, I kind of went about it um, a dumb way, you know, but it, it was a good learning lesson for me. So all of 2017, you know, I was still putting out banner signs and I, w- I would get a deal here and there, but it was really weird how it worked, man, because I, I would get a deal and then I, I have a little bit of money saved up. So now I'm spending it on marketing. And then it's like once I'm down to my last wire, it's like God just like hit me. It was like, here's another one. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I know exactly it, it's like it mean. happened like that. <laughs> That's how it works. To right. the T. <laughs> so that literally all of 2017, that's how it worked for mm-hmm. me. Now, where I messed up as at is I kind of got tied up into all this stuff that you have, you know, get a cold caller, do RVMs, do direct mail and all this stuff. So what I did was um, I went 
I was like cold calling, right? This this seems like you know it might work better. So I found some random VA on Upwork.com that did cold calling. I was like, hey, you know, here's some leads. I discovered Mojo Dollar. I was like, hey, here's Mojo Dollar. I never even called, use Mojo, <laughs> nothing. I just said, here, take it. And I was just waiting for him to come into my CRM so I could start calling him. Right, of course, it's gonna be simple. Right. right. You just give them <laughs> <give it, laughs> the tools. I'm gonna leads. close the deal. They're gonna give me qualified <laughs> yeah. leads and I'm gonna close them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, huge mistake. And so that didn't work? Not at all, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so then, Things turn around at 18 because mm-hmm. in his mind, you were a big timer. Yeah. So what was 18 like? Um, Man, it was just uh, just growth, man. Um, well, we, we actually met in... Um, we met at the end of 2018. That's right. So it was 2019 whenever, whenever me and him became partners. So Right. But um, I, want to, I, was, I was talking about 18. So that was... I found my first deal in 2017 and then 2018 yeah. is whenever I went through that year of just like... Oh, up and down. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Down to the last wire. Right. Deal falls in your lap. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. So then you guys partnered up in, uh, in, in 18. So yep. 19, you know, 300 plus, 300,000 plus, that's a pretty good year, especially for your first year. Right. So what did you guys do? What worked? What changed? Um, we found a mentor, mm-hmm. um, you know, we still, you know, even though me and him were, you know, partnered up, uh, beginning of 2019, we were doing deals. We, we kind of fed like our, both of our inner, like we fed off of each other's energy, right? Like he would push me <clears throat> and I would push him to try to, you know, call lock up deals. Right. But it wasn't until middle of uh, 2019, we signed up for, um, Raphael's, um, mm-hmm. program. So once we signed up for Raphael's program, we signed up for his mentorship. Um, that really is what made the big difference for us of, really understanding this business and everything involved in it you know as far as the team the marketing knowing your market the you know even the crm everything so got it yeah exactly and just to go back off of what you said about feeding each other so the beginning of 2019 we did our first deal he brought a 5k deal to a 15k deal or something like that from his buyer's list and that became true for me and i was all in at that point right I was like selling my personal house and pulling the equity <laughs> out. <laughs> I was cashing out my 401k. I was. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I was like, you know, my job is going to have to fire me because I'm done. Mm-hmm. You know, I get, I risked, you know, 15, 16, 17 years, you know, and I had, I had seniority in my company and I was just like, I'm not doing it anymore. They're going to have to push me out you of the checked door. checked out. Checked yeah. out, shut the door. You know, and I was on the lead, you know, I was in the office following up with leads, calling this guy, like, <laughs> hey, you know, go to, you know, this is what we're doing, you know? And he's complaining about being an agent, right? He's like, man, I hate yeah. being an agent. And I was like, I hate <laughs> being at this company. Yeah. You know, so we got a game plan, right? And we tested the waters out for, you know, two, three months. And that's what Cody was referring to, pushing each other, because I would get a deal, right? And then, you know, it had a 10K spread. Then he got a deal and had a 15K spread. And I was like, man, I can't let Cody beat me, man, no. Yeah. You know? And then we just drove it home. And then eventually we're like, hey, man, I think we have something here. We closed like four or five deals. And then, you know, we eventually, you know, created the LLC. Yeah, yeah. yeah, created the LLC, tied the knot. And then we got the game plan for, you know, Cody, you know, got out of being an agent. And then, you know, three months later, I got, I I quit. I quit in August. But within me quitting, we had, that's when in the summer, we had went with uh, Raph and kind of like, we didn't, we were just writing leads on notebooks and just oh, like yeah. we were all we were just so so disorganized mm-hmm. right yeah. and then that's what Raph turned us on to systematizing everything and yeah. being organized and reverse engineering goals and targets <clears throat> and figuring out where to need, we needed to be as far as KPI wise and all that. So one thing that I've said on the show and people kind of like I get some I don't know less positive messages about this because I Steve you're always harping on partnership partnerships you hate partnerships mm-hmm. and for the most part I do so for you guys yeah. it's clearly worked what tips would you give someone to make a partnership work man I would say you have to find your strengths and weaknesses yeah. and and go off of that right um you know co- you know Cody and you know like it's not black and white right I would that's how I would say everything's not black and white but you have to find where you can push and pull on each other to be able to get that done, right? So Cody, you know, it had a lot of value in dispositions, right? And I had a lot of value in acquisitions because I was dive head in first and let's just spend the money, let's go, you know, here's this, here's that, and let's just A little go. bit of a faster mover. Yeah, you know? exactly. Well, you mean just, you went all in, you sold everything, so yeah. yeah. 
much faster mover. Yeah, that, that's how he is, man. Yeah. And Once he's all in, he's all in. Yeah, tunnel yeah. vision. Yeah. yeah. Tunnel vision. That's yeah. what, like, my thing was. Tunnel vision. He's, but that's one of the things you need yeah. to be successful. <clears throat> right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so your acquisitions. So you kind of talk about, like, clearly defined roles. So then what exactly is your role in the organization? So I'm a head of acquisitions, and I also handle, like, the hard transactions, <clears throat> you know, when there's affidavits and – all oh, kind of freaking so complex. Up title. Oh my God, just all the messed up stuff, right? Deaths and just probates and just all the stuff. Like we all, we have all been there, right? Yeah. So that, you know, a deal that is like, Cody's like, man, that's done. I don't want to mess with it. And I'm like, <laughs> there's <Yeah>. still a chance. <laughs> so he's saying there's still a chance. I'm going to go figure it out, right? Yeah. You know, so, so it's not uh, dead. It's on life support, but it's not dead. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and then what is your role? Um, dispositions mainly, you know, still focusing on uh, developing, you know, more buyers mm -hmm. and moving our deals. And then also, um, you know, KPIs and marketing. Who's handling systems? Um, we both kind we of both do. Yeah. So he's more of like the person that he'll take a Excel spreadsheet and just like, I mean, dude, it's, it's all like perfect, you know, laid mm -hmm. out instructions circles arrows pointing to this and stuff like that and i'm like man i don't know how the hell you do that so like we get together and we just project manager yeah the project manager background that's right. yeah that's right yeah mm -hmm. that's what you need from a project manager yeah, yeah man yeah organized and you got a clear plan right you execute it and you bill it right yeah you have to you have know? a clear vision so um one thing i hear uh from other people is if you got a 50 50 partnership because someone's asking me so you know even though I have partnerships, I am a 50-50 with Max. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, what do you guys do when you guys disagree? It's like, well, we've never disagreed so passionately where one person had like actually got upset the other. Yeah. What do you guys do? Man, we, we, we disagree on <laughs> some stuff, right? Are we all the time. But, yeah, all the time, right? But we work it out, right? Yeah. And then it's just like, fine, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. But it's yeah. not like the wife, like, all right, you do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not at all. No, we got buy-in, you know. Yeah. And yeah. and that that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we just, you know, at the end of the day, I, I trust this guy like he's my brother, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I know, you know, his his best interest is is for us, the company, right? All right. So, you know, vice versa. So you know, the egos put aside for the better of the company. For sure, absolutely. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, you guys both came from a corporate background. So you want to start off like, how has your corporate background translated into this industry? Uh, I, I mean, you kind of hit on the the project management side, right? So as far as you know, I think we both have traits with visionary and integration, you know, going off the book. Um, but I would say he's more, you know, if we were to cut the line, right, he's more visionary and I'm more integration. So uh, interesting, because usually the acquisition <clears throat> guy is more visionary. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I mean, we just have high, both high Ds, right? Mm -hmm. Our personality are very aggressive, grab the bull by the horns type of personalities. So I think we complement each other there well. Uh, he's yeah. more not <clears throat> to jump in, and I am, and then mm -hmm. it kind of holds me back. So we kind of complement each other there well, too. But to, I guess, answer your question as far as, like, the integration part with, with people, I'm very involved with the training with the people and systematizing that, like, especially training in acquisitions, you know, uh, you know, you're going to watch this video this day, this video this day, this video, and everything's going to be perfect. And, and, you know, you're going to know how to lock up a deal, you know, after mm -hmm. day, you know, mm -hmm. five or whatever. Right? right. But I get the plan. I set it out. And then I uh, find holes right within, you know, a month or two. And then I train them on that, you know. Got so it. as far as the integration with the people, uh, I'm, I lean more towards that. And um, as far as, yeah, I mean, I guess that's exactly on the corporate world because that's what I did in the oil and gas, you know, job I had at uh, Oceaneering. You know, I had to manage a team and poked holes and I, you know, put a plan to execute and I had to figure out lessons learned and, you know, not to prevent, you know, I had to capture that so we couldn't yeah. do it again, you know, all that stuff. Got it. Yeah. How about you? Oh, uh, man, to be honest with you, um, everything I did in the oil and gas was just hands on, man. Just tough work, you know. Um, getting dirty, sweating, working late at night. So you guys are both truck. working with your hands in oil and gas. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I can never, I can't even oh, picture man. that. Yeah, yeah, man. man it's, I'm it's, talking it's swinging sledges. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So getting down. You know, I'm from Louisiana. That's that's what everybody does out there. You know, really? you, you go to school. Yeah. You know, you go work in oil and gas. That's how you make your money. You know. Mm. Yeah. And um, you know, for what it like. From that to transitioning into real estate, man, um, I think it's just hard work. 
you know, just work hard, work my butt off. Everywhere I worked for, every company I worked for, I can honestly say I, I really gave it 100% of me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think just taking that same mentality and just that same work ethic and just transitioning into my own thing is what really, you know, helped me out from that. Yeah, Got and I, th- I think a big thing with Cody too, right, Steve, is um, I'm more <laughs> on the training side, I guess. But, um, and I know we're probably going to hit on it too, but Cody is really big on culture and vibing with our team joking with them right and not to say good cop bad cop type thing right mm-hmm. but i do come in and lay down the hammer sometimes i can totally know? see this and and cody's you know he's like oh man oh man it'd be cool. <laughs> you know it'd be laughs and jokes yeah, so yeah, everybody hyped up man yeah he gets yeah. he gets people hyped up so mm-hmm. so culture and i i think that's something that's super important right mm-hmm. so let's elaborate on that how how are you raising the culture making the culture you know good environment to want to come to work yeah, it's um, just getting everybody just like energized, man. Uh, obviously, like you know, this is real estate. There's you deal with BS all day. You know what I mean? Like, or, or at least multiple times a day. All mm-hmm. day. So it's just keeping that energy, you know, in the building. Um, you know, we have music playing whenever somebody you know gets a contract. We hit the gong and like we make it a rule. Like if somebody hits the gong, everybody's like clapping. You know what yeah. I mean? Like cheering that person on. Um, we set goals for them now. Um, so we you know we try to get them like more goal driven and um you know with i think we have a good thing with our quarterly meetings now so we have uh you know traction right so Mm -hmm. we have a quarterly meeting with everybody yeah and then we'll go celebrate you know we'll go eat out we'll go drink we'll go just have fun just bond with each other you know and it's kind of a time to kind of like get out of our space our workspace and just kind of like group together like a family and just have some fun you know got it so that's awesome. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? I mean, yeah, just uh, Cody's really good, you know, doing the spin, the spin wheel, right? And this is we <laughs> see we see guys doing it, so we're just copying what they're doing, right. and and that's that's man, we're good. We're just good at reciprocating what other people are doing mm-hmm. well in their business. Explain what what if I wanted to go implement the spin wheel right now? Let's so talk about the spin wheel. If you're in acqui- <laughs> <laughs> if you're in acquisitions, right? So it's eight, eight. You got to hit your contracts, you know. So we do a, a contracts per week is two per week for each rep. So mm-hmm. that would be eight contracts for our acquisition rep. Mm-hmm. So if you do that, you get to spin the wheel once a month, mm-hmm. and say, you know, same thing on our dispo. They got to hit assignments, and you know, per week if they hit it for the month. They get it. <laughs> they get to hit that. But what's on we- that wheel? Oh man, iPad. Just, Hawaii. Hold on, stay. <laughs> well, hold on, man. Come on. Don't y'all yeah, get no ideas. You might, you might have them hold watching up. us right we now. They're, probably, the, they're gonna up. be asking us about this. <laughs> um, I use gift cards and stuff like that. Gift you know, cards. normal stuff. We do some fun stuff too. We though, do a five hundred. Yeah. We do a five hundred one. Yeah. Five hundred one on your next close deal. Awesome. Pie, pie the manager in the face. Stuff like that, <laughs> man. Just just fun stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, rock paper scissors push ups. Like you know for your next. Oh spin. yeah, the yeah. push ups. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Push ups. Yeah. You guys are doing push-ups, not the guys that win. No, no, they are. They are. <laughs> yeah, they, they do 30 push-ups to spin again. You got to do 30 spin push-ups. Spin again. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> very cool, very cool. All right, so um, back in March, there was this disease. This thing, this thing kind of happened, right. and everyone reacted a little bit differently. What was your guys' response? Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Uh, whenever it first came out, we freaked out a little bit. Um, you know, made us question everything, like, you know, we worked our asses off to get here, and now this virus is coming in to to put a stopping on us. But um, it took about a week. A- after a week, you know, everybody was panicking, and then, um, you know, we just were like, dude, we came this far, we're not gonna stop, you know? And, mm-hmm. and we were like, if, if everybody else is gonna back out, you know, because there were some other players in, you know, our markets that were kind of, you know, trying to dip out a little bit, and um, we we're like, man, we're gonna start marketing harder, mm-hmm. you know? And it paid off for us. So one of the things that we saw, you know, looking around the country, because everyone responded differently. Mm-hmm. You right. know, some people were like, I'm going to double down. Some people were like, shut everything down, right? I'm going to stop all marketing and I'm going to start laying people off, which I was kind of surprised, like, you know, how quickly right. some people got were, were, were laying people off. What was it like when you guys in, in, in H-Town? Um, there was a few people doing that. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, we, we thought about doing it ourselves and I don't know, man, it's just like, one of those things where you get this far and it's like, I'm not going to let this fire stop us. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? People are still going to need to sell their house. Um, and if they're stopping, that just leaves more food for us on the table. Yeah. So, yeah. We saw opportunity yeah. all day and I feel like it was a good mix. You know, there were some guys that, you know, we were kind of surprised 
that you know we kind of gobbled up some of their acquisition guys so mm -hmm. we were kind of surprised that they were letting people go you know and we tried to take advantage of that but we didn't really um you know let, let it affect us what I, I guess what's what i'm trying to say is we saw opportunity mm -hmm. we saw the opportunity and it was like you know go big or go home so yeah. we feel like this is an opportunity to you know lay the you know smash down on the pedal and and you know hit and you're rewarded road. for taking that risk absolutely yeah. like what, what was the what was the benefit what was the upside from taking that risk uh, we, I think, I think some of our files got delayed, and we learned a lot with mm -hmm. transactions. I think, yeah. um, and and we got we got rewarded pretty heavily with some of our assignments, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For for all of our marketing, you know, right. We we turned we that and that's really, that's really when we turned fifty sixty k months, because I guess in June was our first hundred k month. Mm -hmm. So and then July we did it again. So really from our efforts of doing that double down marketing is when we started hitting hundred K months. Right. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, cause this is something that was interesting to see, you know, like, um, I, I joke every once in a while, you know, I got PTSD cause I went through the last recession, mm -hmm. 07, 09. And, uh, you know, when this whole thing happened, it was really interesting to kind of witness what everyone was doing. And one thing that, uh, Gary, Keller, Gary Keller talks about in the book shift mm -hmm. is like when things get really interesting, that's when you increase market share. Yeah, and then when things get back to normal, you just retain market share, mm -hmm. and that's what you guys did. Right. You guys grew market share, and now that things are kind of getting back to normal, as normal as it can be, right? You guys are just kind of protecting. That's right. What you guys grew, right? But you guys are also expanding, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, what markets are you guys in now? We're um, in uh, we're in pretty much all of tech. We were in mainly Houston and Dallas, but we you know did some things in our marketing campaign to really hit the whole state of Texas. And we've been in Louisiana for some time now, mm -hmm. and then we're kind of in. That's kind of in Cody's realm. We're dabbling in in uh, Tennessee now too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How far is that from where you're at? And uh, in... how far is Tennessee? Yeah, yeah. From from where you are in Missouri or from uh, Louisiana? Um, Tennessee's a little ways. So it's. I mean, yeah. so how did you guys decide? I mean, that's that's not like a quick drive. Like how? Not, yeah. <laughs> how did you guys yeah. decide? Man, so um, you know. Uh, it's, it's really crazy the power of social media, you mm -hmm. know, because we post stuff, you know, like on our Instagrams, Facebook, you know, the office, the culture, us, you know, getting deals, stuff like that. And, um, you know, people see that, they get drawn to it. And um, I actually had a good friend that I actually worked with in oil and gas. Um, he hit me up and he was like, hey, you know, I want to get involved with this. Like, can I can I give you guys money to market with? And, you know, we could just, you know, do like some type of profit share on it or something. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, you know, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, come yeah. on. So, you know, it, it, it started paying off for us. You know, that's how we got started with Louisiana too. You know, we got a guy that, that pays for all the marketing out there and stuff. So, um, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's working out pretty well. Mm -hmm. Got it. And your book is out. No, it's uh no, it's it's coming out soon. Yeah. Coming out, Pre when? Yeah, you guys, <laughs> I've been hearing about it. I've been hearing about it forever. Hey man, my book publisher <laughs> said, yeah, I don't have to give a date out. No, yeah. <laughs> December twelfth is, December is 12th. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. So we'll ship it out, and then we're also launching it with the title company that yeah. we have. So you know, shout out to the you know Patriot Title. December twelfth, we'll be also doing a pre-launch book book party. So we'll be signing the book, and if you ever ordered a book in your local, you can come out and see us. Yes. Want to Come on. I want to sign coffee. Come on down Come on, to man. Houston, man. <laughs> That's an excuse. December 12th, man. Come yes. on. So what's the book about? Uh, so the, the book kind of strained off from really the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I was spending, you know, spending a lot of time training the acquisition guys. And we had like one or two, three guys turn over real quick. And I lost, you know, three or four days, you know, because I was doing physical training with them. And so I started doing video recordings. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I eventually got done pretty much with acquisitions. And then um, we started hitting 100K months and then we started getting people to coach us on the side. So uh, we, you know, mentored a few couples and I said, man, this is, this is pretty powerful what I have in the video recording series. So instead of them coming one-on-one -on -one with us, I would put them through the videos that I gave my acquisition guys. So, you know, going back through what I was coached with, I put all that stuff in a book, mm -hmm. you know, to help give back 
you know, people that are, you know, either sick in their corporate America or they're looking for an entry, and, you know, you want to get into wholesaling, you don't know what it is, it's going over your head, right? Cody didn't know mm-hmm. what wholesaling was. This book is something that you can go and, and be a guideline from pretty much from A to Z with wholesaling. Got it. Um, so for someone that is listening to the show, hasn't seen it, what's the title of the book? It's called uh, Texas Size Wholesaling. You mm-hmm. can go out, you know, TexasSizeWholesaling.com. So uh, me and Cody are, you know, co-authors in it. So yeah, Texas Size, size Wholesaling. Awesome. Get, the, get the Texas way of wholesaling. Awesome. Very <laughs> cool. Very cool. Yeah, it seems like in Texas, if you're in one market, you just might as well be in all the markets. It's always interesting. Right. Yeah, that was the thought process, right? Was, you know, we got to do it in our own backyard, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so this is a selfish plug alert for everyone that's listening here. Uh, so can you talk about how joining our mastermind, our mentorship program affected your guys' business? Yeah, man, um, it definitely, you know, your, your sales style, um, mm-hmm. you know, the going negative, the patience, um, our guys love it, man. They, um, they basically took your style and kind of implemented it their lo- in their own little way, right? you know? Uh, so they, they love your style. Um, the way you are too, with, you know, getting nitty gritty with the texting, right? Yeah. So like the, you know, the, the, you know, getting the conversation started, you right. know? was uh, really beneficial as well. We actually use y'all's two closing, you know, y'all's two closing techniques. Mm-hmm. So we had, you know, anchoring, right? right? So we, we still use that when we can or when we need to, right? Or whenever the opportunity presents itself, but we like the mortgage, right? Mm-hmm. If I can cover the mortgage, mm-hmm. we were like mind blown by that. Like, oh my <laughs> God, such a good way. How can we were doing that? Yeah. And then uh, investors are paying for, you know, 50, this is what we're paying for. We kind of use it as, you know, cash, you know, cash buyers, what they're yeah. paying, but mm-hmm. y'all took it to another level and yeah. it just made so much more sense. So we now have three closing techniques that yeah. are solid, right? right? Instead of the middle close, you know what I mean? Yeah. We have those two closing techniques. Mm-hmm. So your script did a lot for us, a lot for us. And I would say the uh, the Sandler sales training, yeah. you know, for sure. Awesome. Very happy to hear that. And uh, what do you know, like, were you able to track it? Like once you started doing it, like how much of a difference it made actually in, in the sales and the closes? Yeah. So as far as acquisitions, um, you know, our guy Hanson, you know, he, he kind of merged our script into it mm-hmm. and you know, the, the KPIs, as far as like bringing our opportunities to contracts, we probably went from, I don't know, I would say probably like, I don't know, seven or eight opportunities to a contract to like five or six. Yeah. So it helped us, you know, you know, we, cause that's why we get our KPIs, right, Steve? So Whenever we were tracking that, you know, we didn't really know if our guys, you know, we had crap leads or if our guys were just not being able to close it. So I think it took our guys from a sales point of view to to being better salesmen, for sure. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Very happy to hear that. So talking about KPIs, that was your department. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So what are you guys using right now to track KPIs? Um, So mainly Podio. We have a custom build Podio. And what would you say are the major KPIs that you guys are tracking that might not be as intuitive that everyone else is tracking? Um, I just started getting into like really digging down to, you know, our, you know, our cost per lead Mm -hmm. for, you know, SMS, cold calling, stuff like that. So um, I think, you know, it it takes it to me, you know, personally, I think it takes at least three months of some type of marketing, you know, whether it's cold calling SMS to really understand if it's working or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Because you don't. They don't all close the first week. Right, right, right. It'd be right. nice if they did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right? <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, Chris Vasquez wants to know, you know, you guys are talking about, you know, really big numbers. I think uh, it was 80 plus transactions year to date. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, what size is your is your team to, to be able to handle all that? So we have three in dispositions, and then we have three. Th- yeah, we have in three dispositions. That's a lot. So, so yeah. we did it. We did a little transition, we made some right? Changes. So we made some yeah. changes, and that was part of our structure change, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is uh, we, you know, we got rid of uh, transaction coordinator. Mm-hmm. So we had a transaction coordinator, and it was too many chinks <clears throat> in the chain. Mm-hmm. And you know, shout out to Nick. So he he gave us some golden nuggets on that. And, you know, we actually had a lot of money on the board and it didn't, you know, you know, I think it was in August or September, we yeah. went from 200 K on the board to like 60 or 70 K and it, a lot of them were title transaction issues. So we were going from rapport with the seller, with our acquisition guys 
to the you know the title transaction coordinator right and then you know we get a buyer in place and then and then they would have to have rapport and then it was just three people and the seller got confused and the buyer would get confused mm -hmm. you know and then just you know financially it was like man there it's not efficient mm -hmm. so we just added our title transaction coordinator to dispositions is what we did and um you know so the person that's in dispositions is also responsible for dealing with the transaction right and yep. we move yeah so it, it just goes from acquisition straight to our dispo rep and they take it from cradle to grave from mm -hmm. contract to close got it yeah so they're dealing with the seller dealing with the showings dealing with the pictures if we don't have pictures everything oh even the pictures everything yeah. if the acquisition rep didn't get it got it you know we we kind of harp on them to get it right and i'm mm. you know buster chops about not getting it or whatever right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but if they can't get it right there's certain little you know techniques that we can do you know putting an ad out there on, you know, doing a handyman, that type of stuff to get pictures at a reduced rate. Cause that was, that was one thing that was, uh, oh, dude, our, our yeah. runner, our runner cost was yeah, freaking we ridiculous. Like 3,000, so, 3,500, so, 4,000. So when we times. heard the virtual phase, right? We're like, Oh man, that's, you know, this is great. You know, we don't, we could, all we had to do acquisitions, close contracts, disposition, all they had to, you know, that's the easiest role in the, in the company mm. just have to sell and close yeah. the buyer, get pictures every, you know, we can delegate everything, you know, we just do KPIs, but our, our runner costs started, you know, getting real high, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. three, four K a month, yeah. you know, doing pictures and showings. So we're like, yeah, maybe we need to rethink this, you mm. know, so, so three dispositions. What about the rest of the company? Uh, four acquisitions, and um, we promoted one of our acquisition guys to acquisition uh, leader. So he's kind of running the show, being the uh, like he, helping everybody out. You know, underwriting deals. Um, you know, listening to him, training, doing uh, you know meetings with them. You know, making sure that they're hitting their goals and stuff. So, got it. Yeah, role playing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, RVAs. Yeah, you know, yeah. RVAs, RVAs in the yeah. Philippines. We got. Yeah three four admin vas mm -hmm. and then uh five callers and one quality control you know for the callers and they're the the vas they're calling are in the philippines yes mm -hmm. got it mm -hmm. and those three dispositions does not include you no so you you're managing those three yeah we mm -hmm. both we both manage them but i mainly keep an eye on you know just our our buyers list right growing our buyers got it getting these deals sold marketing these deals stuff like that okay yeah and then obviously for you acquisitions and, and transactions, I, you know, so I push the board, right? So whenever we get an assignment on the board and you know, I'm like, we ain't waiting until the next month, we're pulling that in this month. So <laughs> what are we going to do? How do we need to do it? And I'll go yeah. hover over the shoulder. Like, what? let's get it done. Call them. Like you need some help. Let's do it. Right. I'm putting out fires immediately doing whatever I need to do. If God needs, you know, one of the acquisition guys needs me to go lock up a deal. I'll run and go over there. That mm -hmm. way they can stay in the office, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, if the, the soon as, as soon as the deal is closable, let's go mm -hmm. ahead and close it because you yep. just don't know Oof. what's going to happen. Yep. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, Asan Altop wants to know what marketing are you guys doing right now? Um, cold call, SMS, a um, little bit of RVMs, not too much, uh, Facebook and um, some PPC. PPC. Yep. Got it. Very cool. Um, someone, uh, you know, is asking why does it always seem like near impossible to get your first deal? Um, so Jesse Burrell wants to know who you're using for, for a skip tracing. Bad skip trace. Bad <laughs> skip tracing. <laughs> um, let's see what else is there. The infamous KPIs, a lot of love from Texas. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so the cash house fires team. Was it challenging to let the others take over the cold calling acquisitions disposition? What does he mean by that? Like, I think it's the delegation, right? That's that classic question. Like, how do you delegate without <sighs> losing sleep? You just have to do it. You know, it's, you have to do it in order to grow. Yeah. I mean, it, it just is what it is. We only have so much time in a day. And if you want to be focused on growing your company, you're going to have to, you know, at the end of the day, no one's going to close get a file close mm -hmm. close a seller like you can right mm -hmm. so you just got to find somebody train them right and you know you got to venture off and do do your thing you know eventually you just got to let it go you got to yeah. set guidelines for them you got to set guidelines for them and you got to hold them accountable mm -hmm. to those guidelines so, so if you're looking to delegate that you need to set a, I don't know five to ten bullet point list and you know make them time block that and Kate, you know, track them on that, right? They may not hit it, but at least you have <clears throat> something for them to go by, right? So, Mr. Project Manager, <laughs> how, how do we keep people accountable? 
Well, we have weekly meetings with them, mm -hmm. right? And we track those KPIs. And if they're, they don't hit those KPIs, they don't get incentivized, mm -hmm. right? And there's commission splits. So, you know, money is the biggest incentive. So it always involves money. So let's just use the, um, the classic example, right? So what, what is a KPI like? The bare, like what's the bare minimum standard for, uh, I don't know, conversations? Or what's, what's, the, what's the metric that someone get fired for? Um, man, that's tough. Yeah. To get fired to get fired for you, mm. like as far as talk time or you talk. Yeah, what's the yeah. metric? So, that you, that's yeah. Like, so we just started doing yeah. hundred, yeah, yeah. hundred calls a day, and um, we don't have like a metric for talk time. Right. We but the if there are less yeah. than you know hundred calls a day, you better have a lot of talk time. Okay, so let's say it's hundred <laughs> calls, hundred calls a day, right? Yeah. So you're looking at my numbers. That's right. And it's like. 87 92 every day i know it's 100 you've told me it's 100 it's 87 to 92. Mm -hmm. you guys run into this situation mm -hmm. every day <laughs> all right <laughs> so mr accountability guy how are you what's this conversation sound like? i immediately go to their talk time and see what their talk time is right so let's say it's and substandard if it's substandard i'm like hey listen steve what's going on man what are you doing are you, you know, pulling I'm, me to conference room I, or we're doing it in front of everybody i'm doing it I, so i mean there's we have a real good vibe. I can do it in front of everybody. Yeah. You know, we do. We used to be really good at weekly evaluations. And we yeah. kind of deeded off that because we have the acquisition manager now. Mm -hmm. But uh, our guys have been with us over six months and they have thick skin. We've created that culture where mm -hmm. I, I kind of get on their ass, but it's joking matter. You know, like mm -hmm. don't come in here, you know, trying to talk about a comp. You know, when you got an ARV over 200 yeah. and then you're trying to talk as an ARV at 350, you know, yeah. don't waste my time with that. But um, and these guys know right not to, you know, waste our time. And I don't mean to say that in a rude way, mm -hmm. you know, but we train them in a way and I've wasted them. I've, I've invested my time in you to show you how to do this. Right. And mm -hmm. we're not in the business of repeating ourselves. We're in the business to make money and we're going to hold you standard to that. So what are we going to do you know what i mean yeah. you know because if you're not gonna if you're not gonna get your calls right you're not gonna get your talk time right it's not black and white but you're not gonna get contracts mm -hmm. it's you know it is a numbers game to a certain extent you know what i mean but if your calls are are up and your talk time <clears throat> is is or if your calls are down and your talk time is up and i know you're having good conversations then you know i'm not too worried about the kpis yeah. you know maybe well, let's just say three weeks in a row am i like 89. <clears throat> oh yeah no we ain't we ain't doing that so <laughs> so Look, we really I, haven't ran into that yeah. situation where we really got someone out of the kpis but yeah. you know we're gonna bring them in you know mm -hmm. then you know if that gets to a point where it's repetitive you know they're they're coming in because we office in the same office yeah. mm -hmm. and they're coming in and they're sitting on the other side of the table and we're gonna have to talk about what 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 are we doing here right at the end of the there's day, ultimatums man, it, it's all about getting contracts right mm -hmm. the, the acquisition guys need to get good contracts so we hold them to a standard of getting two a week okay so they asked us actually like last week they were like well you guys want us to make 100 calls and we're like no that's like a that's like a like a, a bar that's like a bar if you're making 100 calls a day right right you should be able to get two contracts a week mm -hmm. right so that's that's what we hold them accountable for that for sure yeah got it yeah so, but you're the bad guy over the two. <laughs> He's a bad guy too. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, it depends oh, on. Don't take all the no. Yeah. <laughs> no, they know. Yeah. Well, I bring it's this up good. because this is something that everyone has has challenges with, right? Like, it's yeah. just kind of yeah. like we. No one enjoys like that's a tough conversation. It's a difficult conversation. No one enjoys having it. I hate them. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, just want to see how you guys approached it. We do not like having those conversations, but yeah. um, it, I mean, it's we we got the environment where they know, you know, yeah. they know and. Sometimes, you know, they get, you know, they get lax of day school because they might have got a 30, 40 K assignment, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, man, what's happened to you talk time, man? Yeah. <laughs> what happened to it? <laughs> like you were crushing it two hours a day, yeah. Yeah. you know, three weeks ago. And you relax. You relax. They got that, they got that you know, check coming. And then got they got the check coming. And sales worry. people. They get yeah. So it's, it's always, you know, having your pulse on them and mm. figuring out, you know, always having a pulse on your business and what's going on right and uh not getting too not getting too you know tunnel vision with that stuff but hit them hit them sporadic sporadically randomly you know yeah uh moises gonzalez wants to know what's the best way to train your acquisition people 
videos now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, for sure. I would say the 80, 20 rule, mm -hmm. right? So I would, uh, I would definitely put them through videos, whether it's your own videos or mm -hmm. someone else's videos, there's plenty of acquisition, you know, masterminds out there, you know, you have a really good one. There's a lot of other guys that have them. So I would put them through 80% of, of their acquisition training. And then I would do 20%, 30 minutes a day, an hour a day with them, mm -hmm. ha have them, you know, once they figure out sales philosophy, right, how to close, uh, I would move them into comps, you know, yeah. so comps is next. So, you know, just, you know, 10, 20 comps, you know, every day, right? Mm -hmm. And you just go back test them, you know. Got it. And then uh, <clears throat> Kevin Mendoza wants to know, how soon into your guys' partnership did you begin to delegate? Um, we didn't make our, so we started our partnership probably around like March, April, mm -hmm. I would say. And then we didn't start, we hired our first person around July, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So a couple months, you know, we started hiring an acquisition person. Yeah. That was our first hire. And then Ray Delgado wants to know what is your guys' biggest struggle right now? My biggest struggle is having the shiny object syndrome and preventing <laughs> going into other investments and like, hey, we need to do this, we need to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. As as um, that that would right now currently uh, in our in our wholesale side, um, there's not too much struggling with not normal day to day, right? It's mm -hmm. always day to day operation, but that's. That's our struggle because we put people in play in it, you know, in a position where it's kind of hands off and, you know, we just have to put out major, major fires. So mm -hmm. yeah. getting getting straight away from doing a flip, doing three flips, mm -hmm. trying to get a new construction, trying to move on and like hair wholesale, <laughs> it's running itself and getting yeah. into something else. Yeah. So I would say that's for me, that's what the biggest struggle is because. I feel like sometimes the wholesale business can run itself now mm -hmm. almost and trying to get off into something else. So that's that's a struggle with me. What have you done to try to fix that? Nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I mean, talk to Cody, right? Yeah. I mean, we we're talking. Talk, yeah. yeah. Every day we're mm -hmm. talking about it. Right. And trying to figure out what we want to go into next. Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's flips. So uh, it's really not a struggle right now. Yeah. But I guess if, if I were to pinpoint it to one thing that it would be uh, money. Yeah. yeah private money yeah yeah we started cherry picking our own deals you know it got to a point where we we're like man you know let's just take this one down and then yeah. you know we got another good one that comes up and we're like oh we got too much going on right now mm -hmm. you know so i think the biggest struggle right now for us is just really time you know um we're just delegating more we need to start delegating a little bit more you mm -hmm. know because there's still stuff i do day to day i'm like why am i even doing this Right. You know, I need yeah. like a VA or like, you know, assistant. Is that a higher this. level task or a lower level task? Lower okay. level. Okay. Yeah. So you just need like an assistant. I need an assistant. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Both do. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, it sounds like you have to figure it out. Um, <laughs> so uh, Anthony Walters wants to know, what are your SMS KPIs? Man, um, yeah, I was talking to Jesse today about it. Uh, he asked me a question that I didn't even know the answer to is what is our um, response rate like with SMS? I didn't even know the answer to that because it, it got to a point where I just, you know, let the VAs just do it. And I'm just, you know, our acquisition guys just haven't coming in. Um, but right now I know like right off the top of my head, um, our cost per lead is around like 120 bucks mm -hmm. per uh, per lead. So. And his follow up question to that was, do you like SMS more or cold calling? Cold calling. Cold calling. Yeah. Because. Um, man, S SMS, I just I don't know, man. Um, I think it's a little tougher, tougher right now. And it, that might just be that just my personal opinion. Um, I think we have our cold calling down much more, you know, Pat, you know, our cold callers are trained, they're skilled, uh, they're asking the right questions. And um, I don't know, man, it, to me, SMS is just used to get that phone appointment, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas like cold calling, you've already kind of like talked to them, you've already built a little bit of rapport with them. And it, tr it transitions to our acquisition guys much more smoother than a text does. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, and Marquis Daquan, I'm probably butchering the, their name. Um, do you ever run out of data for your callers? No, mm -mm. <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah. No, there's always lists we can pull, man. Yeah, we've never run out of, out of data for our callers, but definitely ran out of data for our texters. Um, yeah, I can see how that could go by fast. Yeah. Uh, Leron Mitchell wants to know, do you guys know your contract to close ratio? Um, c contract to, 
to close ratio. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think we're at like what? It's it's yeah, it's pretty. It's 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 lower than fifty. Yeah, yeah. I think we're at like forty. Yeah. It's not where it yeah. needs to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah that is one of our right things now. that we talked about in our quarterly meeting was yeah. improving that. What do you attribute that to? Um, well, it starts with acquisitions, right? What are we locking up these deals for? Yeah. Right, a- every house can sell for the right price. All right, so, so contracting too high, contracting too high. Yeah, mm-hmm. got it for sure, one hundred percent. And you know, right below that would be title issues too. Title issues, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Corley Griffin wants to know what books are you reading right now uh, to improve your leadership skills. Um, man, I'm actually about to start a book called uh, the Twelve Week Year, mm-hmm. um, and I, I haven't started it yet, but have you ever read it? <laughs> I, I think if you read Traction, you don't need it. Really? Okay. Okay. I mean, there might be some good stuff in there. I just don't know. Yeah. Like, Traction did a pretty good job of combining the best parts of the uh, of the twelve week year and uh, and um, what's that Jim Collins book from Good to Great? Okay. Mm-hmm. There were a lot, you know, the GWC component within Traction. Yeah. So, I don't gotcha. know. Might be better off just reading Traction again. Yeah. Just. I don't right. know. Yeah, that book that book really transformed our business. Yes, too. it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Especially I mean, before, with the I read the twelve year before traction, mm-hmm. and I thought it was mind blowing. Then I read Maybe traction, traction. Like, it's the same concept. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Got gotcha. you. <laughs> I would say for me, um, you know, private money for us in the flips. So it's not a leadership book, but pitch anything by mm-hmm. Oren. Uh, oh yeah, that's Clough. a really good book. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm trying I, to find it, I don't, I couldn't find it in Audible. I think it's it, there. Is it there? Yeah, Pitching yeah. It's a good book, man. Yeah, it's yeah. on there. Mm-hmm. Very good book. Interesting. Yeah. I was, I I've, I've done the audio, and now I'm doing the the book now. Got it. Very cool. Uh, Leo Gar wants to know: Are you guys buying at, or or holding anything except to doing any creative deals? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're just, absolutely. We just literally uh, we should be closing on it this week. Uh, we picked up an owner finance from a pro, uh, from a lady. Um, out in Kima, Texas, and um, we put two thousand down, three percent for thirty years, and we just yeah. wrapped it. So we sold it to somebody else, and we got that, for, um, that other sub two in Katy. Yeah, yeah, we got another one sub two we picked up in Louisiana locked, today. Yeah, today yeah. we locked up one. Uh, Jesse Burrell wants to know what's the one piece of advice you give to someone new? Dive in, mm-hmm. start. Yeah, yeah. Just take, start. Take consistent action, man. <clears throat> this this yeah. business is all about consistency to me. Uh-huh. Like just every day, just nonstop. The, the the moment you get relaxed is whenever you start having bad months. You know, yeah. just just yeah. stay on it. It's when everyone catches up to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jose Ortiz wants to know where did you guys find your asset managers and your disposition managers? Um, a lot of them on uh, social media. To be honest, I think we never paid. Anybody that's working for us right now from a no, n- no, indeed, no wise yeah. hire. I mean, we've had people hire through there, but everyone that's still there are all through basically f- referrals and social media. Chick fil A and car dealerships. <laughs> Chick fil A's great. <laughs> I could spend a lot of time recruiting at Chick fil A. Uh, Chick fil A's where it's at, man. <laughs> hey, the drive through. Yeah, that's our, our yeah. like senior acquisition guy. <laughs> you know, I met him in a drive through Chick fil A line. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh he's oh, a beast, wow. too. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> do we. I want to know where where did you get your VA? Uh, which one? The caller? I um, guess in general, where are you guys finding well, your VAs? The caller, Jared. Jared met her. Yeah. So we, um, I uh, at a Chris Rude's mentorship. So I, you know, at a Chris Rude, right? So he has a pr- he has a good mentorship program. Mm-hmm. But I got a lot from his students as well. So we did, you know, he they did arbitrage, right? He marked up the the fee for that uh cold caller right mm. i was paying like seven or eight dollars an hour for this cold caller and um you know i just i you know i had a good relationship with these cold callers and they were being treated very fairly at the call center that they were currently at mm. you know so they we i think we got rid of his two cars that he had mm-hmm. and they were you know a- apt to the system that that i had with my two cars so they eventually uh left and then you know we had like four or five callers, so that was enough for them to break away. Mm-hmm. So um, it was just you know it was just through referrals, you know mainly. Mm-hmm. Awesome, very cool. Uh, Efren Ortiz mentioned that twelve week year was really good, so go ahead and read that book. I, All right, uh, <laughs> different opinions, so go for it. Um, uh, Chris Jackson wants to know: Are you guys uploading any of your skip trace lists uh, and retargeting them inside of Facebook? Yes, yes, we have done that. 
Yeah, for sure. And look how alike, look alike. I don't know the KPIs behind it, but yeah, yeah. we're definitely doing that. Look like audience, audiences. With Facebook, we kind of just let somebody else do that. I was like, man, this is too much for me right now. We yeah. kind of let somebody else that was that was doing it knew how to do it, and he's just rocking and rolling with it right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've heard back and forth. I've heard people doing it and having uh, absolutely no traction, and I've yeah. heard hearing other people I was like, yeah, do you know we're doing a yeah. deal or two every month. Right. Yeah, cold calling has been our number one mm-hmm. lead source right now. Mm-hmm. But I say Facebook, man, it's Facebook it's, should it's be taken over. Yeah, yeah, it should be taken over here in the next couple of months. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Got it. Who are you guys? You saying you're going to outsource it? Who are you guys looking mm-hmm. at? So it's with Hessel Media right yeah. now. Uh, Andre Esteban. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's crushing it for us. So got a really, uh, really good uh, return on investment with him. So so you guys are closing deals on Facebook? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, how yeah. many deals are you guys closing from Facebook? So um, it's been we're on month four since we started. Yeah, um, like that. we uh, I knew we closed I think three, and then we're working on one flip that we got right now from it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. awesome, very cool. So and the sub two, sub two was the sub two. two. Yeah. So running your guys' business right now, what is your monthly marketing expense to to you know to get to a mill a year? Yeah. What are you guys spending a month to get there? We're spending about fifteen to eighteen. Month yeah. right now, yeah. Okay, and then any additional overhead? Um, you know the office, yep. um, employees, you know subscriptions, all that stuff starts to add up, right? Yeah, uh, we're at about like ten to twelve, 10, 10 to twelve a month right now. Mm-hmm. Got yeah. it. Awesome. Is there any CRM tool or system that you could not live without? <sighs> man, I love Podio, man. <laughs> I just love Podio. Yeah, yeah couldn't just, live without it. Yeah, we have you know our Podio is a beast. We got some guy that like do all these custom additions. I mean, we've had phone calls with him and Jared's just like, I want my podio to do this, 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 this. And he just made it all happen, man. Automatic, yeah. automatic process. Good, yeah. Go before stuff. Yeah. Tricked mm-hmm. out, tricked yes. out car. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what is your superpower? Um, Man, I don't really know. Um, I, I think Jared, you know what Jared said, like we're really good at uh, finding people that are doing really good in their business and just, you know, putting it into our own our own way you know um i i'm good at finding stuff out you know mm-hmm. once i find it out i put like we put it into action you know figuring out something that we're not doing figuring out something that can be um you know exponential to our business i'm, yeah. I'm good at finding it out and and putting it to work um so i was actually talking to somebody but my business mm-hmm. and they're like well, what do you do it's like well i take a little bit from over here a little bit over there and a little bit over here yeah and we just kind of he's like so you just make your own jambalaya i was like yeah we've yeah. got a mixture Absolutely. of like everybody's stuff <laughs> why not yeah. Yeah. take the easy route man yeah. why try to change it you know yeah absolutely yeah. how about you i mean i want to say work ethic man but if um you know i work really hard i put in a lot of time but for as far as like a team you know you know thing i would say if there's more work to do and you're not doing it i'm gonna push you to do it mm-hmm. yeah yeah i got something to say about him too though he's whenever something needs to be done he doesn't wait a second he's caught like you know you got to talk to the seller let's get her on the phone now mm-hmm. you know we're gonna get her on the phone yeah. now we're gonna get this done yeah. That's, no, he's a driver i can tell oh uh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. patience is not your strength not no. at all <laughs> <laughs> why yeah. wait let's go <laughs> let's freaking go man yeah. i got goals to reach we yeah. all do you know yeah. Yeah. let's hit them I love they do it. too. Uh, so, uh, Carlos wants to know what's the set day for the event in Houston? December twelfth. De- December twelfth, uh, six seven somewhere around there. Yeah, mm-hmm. haven't really come out with the time. All right, but and yeah, then sure. uh, Josue wants to know how fast can you train someone to close a deal? That's mm. a good one. That's a tough question. <laughs> uh, Depends yeah. on a lot of things, yeah. right? I mean, I don't know, dude. Uh, we put them through. A process, you know, like whenever we first hire an acquisition guy, we yeah. put him through a process. Like, you know, they're calling our dead lead. <laughs> they go through the videos, stuff like that, and then they start calling dead leads, mm-hmm. right? And we see, we see how they work with those dead leads. We're not really necessarily looking for them to close one, but if they do, that's great. But um, that's a bonus. Yeah, yeah right. Sure. <laughs> um, but just like how they're handling the amount of calls, the call duration. So, um, you know, the amount of time I would say a new acquisition guy comes in and, and actually closes the deal, uh, gets their first contract. It, it ranges on the type of person, their experience, of course, but I would say anywhere from around like, you know, two to two to four weeks. Exactly yeah. what I was gonna say, two weeks to a month, yeah. I, we know about like in the first yeah. two weeks of them working for us, if they're gonna make or break, 
you know that's pretty solid yeah, yeah two weeks if they're not you know close to closing a deal you know we know they're pretty much out the door mm-hmm. got it uh tang wants to know what do you guys see coming in 2021 market wise a lot of foreclosures, a lot yeah. of forbearances, a lot of sub twos. Watch out, Tang. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we can partner up on that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Sub twos taking over mortgages, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Huge, huge opportunity. Mm-hmm. Got it. And then uh, Ephraim wants to know where are you sending your Facebook leads? Right to Podio. So they, they fill out a form and it comes right into our CRM. Our web form on, on Facebook so yeah. that we don't so, direct them to a web page. Okay, yeah. so... They fill out the web form that's usually pre-filled, right? That one, or they're, they're typing it in. They're typing it in. So they're typing it in, and that just goes right into Podio, and then your team is on it. On goes it. into Podio, or Podio sends them an automatic text. Yeah. Um, I think an email, too. Yeah, yeah. all the above. Yeah. And yeah. Um, text, Yeah, it says, email. like, you know, what's, what's a good time for, for us to talk? And then they'll text back, and then that text will go back into Podio. Acquisition guys. I get an email. Yeah. You know, we all get an email. Yeah, and everybody gets an email. Hey, guys, you're a copy. Hit the guys, right? <laughs> yeah, because, like, Facebook, they don't like redirecting, you know? So we like to keep them right on that form. We don't want to push them to our, our website if it's not converting. We like to take that, that metric out and just make it easy. Directly, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Got it. Very cool. Tang's acting like he doesn't know what sub two is. <laughs> uh, Moises wants to know how much are you guys spending per month in skip tracing. Um, oh god, it's that's, a it's a coding. man, two to three k maybe. Yeah, Four, somewhere around yeah, there. somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. And where do you guys see your business in five years? Um, well, wholesaling wise, you know, you know, we we're getting into all the markets for sure. We're gonna go into all the markets. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all over Texas now. We're going to, you know, push into other states too. Um, man, hopefully, you know, about five years, it better be operational on its own. Yeah, yeah. I would say yeah. Nation, nationwide wholesale company yeah. for sure, right? And then I would probably say land development, mobile home parks. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you were to ask me what's the next thing for us, uh, I would say mobile home parks, yeah. land development in five years for sure. Awesome. Um, and... Someone's asking here, uh, Quando, what challenges you guys have, have you guys faced as a partnership? Mm. Challenges? I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, the, I always, I trust Cody no matter what, right? Oh, yeah. I know he has his best interests, but, you know, there's, there's always, you know, there's always going to be that lingering effect to make sure that he's doing just as much as I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, when he's not doing that, you call his ass out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's just what it is. We we both do that. You know, we um I could say probably one of the I've been in other partnerships with other businesses, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where you feel like you're doing more work than the other. And um, you know, we we push each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, you know, it's even until a point to where like Whenever we're down, like he, even if I'm pissed off about something in the office, he's like, Man, "Come on, bro, it'll be all right." You know, let's yeah. go, and vice versa. So like yeah, we 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 push each other, and um, it almost feels like you're in a competition with each other, mm-hmm. but it's a healthy competition. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and I think we keep a good balance as that, as far as that. And I probably say the only other thing that that we do, you know, it's just we don't really have disagreements, but we just see things sometimes differently. But at the end, I don't know. We've we've always had smooth, smooth, yeah, smooth, yeah. smooth conversations about yeah. certain things that we didn't disagree on. But yeah. I mean, that's got to be the biggest challenge, right? Is trust. Mm-hmm. That's that's for me, right? That is trust, and and if the work ethic is not there, is just making sure you have that hard conversation. Yeah, All right. And I think that's huge because that's one of the biggest challenges with most partnerships mm-hmm. is that no matter what, one person always feels like they're doing more work than the other. Right. And right. for you, you're just saying just freaking address it. Squash it, yeah, get, get it, it done. Get it done. Instead of let's go mm-hmm. lingering on it, letting it fester, right? You're on it, addressing it right then. As, yeah. as long as we're matching each other, yeah. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Is if you, if I'm matching, if I if he feels like I'm matching him and you're matching me, yeah. man, we're we're golden. Yep. All right. Uh, Thomas Joseph wants to know what's keeping you guys up at night. Uh, <laughs> him not doing enough work now. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, Keeping man. me up at night, man. Um, bright and shiny objects, and and just time 
Yeah. Yeah. That's that's for, for right now. That's what it is. Yeah. Yep. I've got that same problem, man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Just getting these deals closed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I just want to see everybody my, like at our organization just just happy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I just want everybody to, you know, blend in well and work hard, you know, to get these deals closed. So that keeps me up. And Kevin Mendoza wants to know what are your whys? So start with you. Um, I think why has changed, you know, whenever I first got started, it was, um, you know, I dropped out of high school. Um, I quit sports. I quit all this stuff. You know, my mom used to tell me, um, um, I'm not good at committing. You know, she told me that before. Uh, <laughs> so it's probably a good I, thing she told you that she, she's so honest with me. Um, yeah, for sure. so I took that to heart, you know, I was like, you know, whenever I, you know, I got into the business and she tried to get me back, you know, she, my mom was like trying to push me to go get a job again. Um, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to do it. So, you know, I know everybody else in my hometown probably seen the same thing, right? Which I, I don't blame them. But um, I, I just wanted to, to do something. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I wanted to, to do it. I wanted to start a business and actually, like, do well with it. But now, um, you know, my biggest why is, um, you know, next year I really want to retire my dad. That's probably my biggest thing is uh, he works out of town a lot. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, my mom's by herself, uh, empty nester. You know what I mean? So I, I really want to, I, I want to retire my dad. That's probably my biggest goal as far as going into next year. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think I, I, the reason why I'm saying, you know, maybe her, your mom saying that to you was a big thing. Like that's mm-hmm. one thing that's always kind of, it goes back to me every once in a while. Cause like I was a slacker, like just a total slacker. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I, when I graduated high school, one of the teachers actually said to me, he's like, you know, it's a shame that, you know, you're, you're just going to totally content with just, you know, uh, slacking and just skating by. It's mm-hmm. like, and we're just like, okay, I mean, that's no big deal. She's like, uh, I see you as a, a waste of your potential. It's like, holy crap, that's Damn, really yeah. strong. Yeah. But like I said, sure. you know, your mom said what you needed to hear. Mm-hmm. That was what I needed to hear. Right. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Mm-hmm. So what is your why? I would, yeah, 100%, Steve, it's going to be my family, man. Yeah. So whenever I, you know, got out of high school, I didn't have any direction, you know, so I, uh, you know, thank God that I had a brother-in-law that showed me the the entry into oil and gas. So that was my only option. And, yeah. you know, that, that, that worked for me. But, you know, I've got a 17-year-old daughter, a 15-year-old daughter, and a 10-year-old son, right? And That's why you have no I, Yeah, I've got my mom near retirement. Well, she's already retired, right? Yeah. So I've got, I've got family, you know, and, and I, want, I want my kids to have the option that I didn't have. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't want them to feel like they're forced to college or they're forced mm-hmm. to the military or they're forced into the workforce. I want them to have a plan and a strategy and, and somewhere where they can flourish in, instead yeah. of, you know, college. Right. All right. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, we'll have the last question here. I mean, we can go on forever to getting a lot of questions, a lot of love from you, uh, from the audience. Awesome. Uh, Andrea yeah. wants to know, how do you feel about your employees wanting to start investing themselves? One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. They should they should definitely we actually encourage that. Right. Yeah. So we'll actually, you know, help them show the way. And we've created a ground, in, you know, in our atmosphere to be able to show you how to flip houses. Right. Mm-hmm. So one hundred percent. That's how that's that should be the natural progression for sure. Awesome. Very cool. So I'm going to make a few quick announcements. I want you guys both to think about some last thoughts you guys want to leave the listeners with. Mm-hmm. Um, guys, if you guys got value today, please like, subscribe, share, comment. That's what helps us with the algorithm so we can reach more people. Uh, next week, we got Dave Payerchin, and he's going to talk about why all those multifamily guys are morons and why single family is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> That's his platform. Uh, and then we do have our workshop. It's going to be in three days, so Saturday and Sunday. <clears throat> if you guys want to check that out, go to disruptors.com slash workshop. See if it, if it makes sense for you guys. Um, so last thoughts um man lastly I, I i guess um you know for i guess like any new people out there just like getting started man just do it just do it stay consistent don't get caught in between all the bells and the whistles of like should i get this program should i get this software just just get started man mm-hmm. you know pick up the phone start dialing you know just just go put out some banner signs do something right Screw and stay, up. stay consistent yeah. you know stay consistent that's my biggest thing. If you stay consistent, you're gonna get a deal. Yeah. Yep. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I would say, write the check. Stop thinking about it, 
and just write the check, whatever it is. If it's a mentor, if it's a cold caller, if it's buying data, whatever it is, just write the check, get it over with, and just dive straight in and take action. Yeah, so <clears throat> two drivers, Absolutely. two starters, action takers. Yeah. Yes, Someone wants to get a hold of you, how, did, how do they do that? Uh, Facebook, uh, Jerry Graves, obviously, and then on Instagram, Texas Size Real Estate. Yep, yep. those are the main two sources. Uh, f- same thing, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Cody Pertle on both of them. Awesome, mm-hmm. very cool. All right, thank you guys awesome, for coming man. on. Thank you. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week. Yeah, see, we real estate disruptors. Can't nobody touch us. And yeah, we about to give you game. Shout out to Steve Train. Real estate disruptors. They cannot touch us. And yeah, we about to give you game. Shout out to Steve Train. Jump on the Steve Train. We about to give you game. REI's flowing through my veins. And you don't have to look no further. See right here, you gon' learn everything. Yeah, see we real estate disruptors. 